dramatic. Shame on you, Major League Baseball. All right? It didn't live up to the hype, and it shouldn't have been the hype. Give me a break. The hype. Kershaw and Paddock, a rookie is a rookie is a rookie. So an explosive offense, chewed up Paddock. Spit him out. Four and two-thirds innings. The Dodgers uh, win six to three. They improve to twenty-eight and sixteen overall. They are eighteen and six at home. If they get uh, if they get uh, what's his name, Craig Kimbrell, forget about it. Uh, and uh, let's see if they can do it. Four and a half game lead in the National League West. Jock Peterson and Cody Bellinger. We've heard those names before. Delivered two run home run off a of paddock in the third inning. Peterson thirteenth home run. And 100th of his career, he's the 28th player to reach the century mark in home runs in the history of the Dodgers. And Bellinger's home run was his 15th, but his first since April 28th. Now back to the busy phones, and let's see what happens. Okay. Good morning. You're on the air. Don't say anything dirty. What's up? Yes, and you are on the air. What's going on? So just let me know. Okay. Wait for today. I'll call you right after I get it. Around 12. Thank you. Busy day here at the office. How about that? Busy day. So, uh, busy, busy day. <laughs> if I got one more call. All right. Let's see. Over or under. Will I get another call? All right. Will I get another call today? Let's see in the chat room. And I'll pay up. All right. If somebody, if I get another call, I'll pay up. I'll buy you all beer. How's that? The Dodgers, 28 and six, they chased Paddock after his 92nd pitch with two outs in the fifth inning. How about that one? So, you know, Kershaw gave up a home run to Fran Mil Reyes in the first, and Machado, playing his first game in L.A. since leaving the Dodgers, hit a two-run homer, and the boos were loud and clear. Loud and clear, Okay. So uh, Kenley Jansen also allowed a double to Machado and then got his 13th save. So how about that? Rich Hill and Walker Bueller will start against the Reds on Friday and Saturday, but they don't have a starter for Sunday yet. Kershaw could pitch on normal rest, or the Dodgers could have Hunshin Rue start on six days rest. Rue last pitched Sunday. We had that no-hitter into the eighth inning. And name player of the week. So we'll see. And of course, for San Diego, you know what Chris Paddock says very clearly? Give him credit. He says, I got beat tonight. Yeah, like a pulp. Uh, he, uh, look, he posted the Major League's lowest DRA, 155, lowest batting average against a 130. He allowed the fewest walks and hits per inning pitched uh, through his first seven starts. And uh, we'll see. He threw just eight curveballs and only one of them for a strike. He was able to get away with just six curveballs when he shut the Mets out uh, last week in seven and two-thirds innings. Uh, but still, uh, you know, most opponents require more than a two-pitch mix. And um, he had turned, he's only got two pitches, four quality starts, four straight he had, all right? He allowed 12 hits, five runs in that stretch, and he's very efficient. But when the Dodgers took him out of his game by waiting, let's see what happens. If Paddock once again receives that kind of treatment, I will tell you, if you're not in a keeper league, uh, Jimmy Ross, good morning, Jimmy, a little busy. There you go. I'm telling you, now listen carefully. The league may have found something in, in Chris Paddock. Wait him out. Wait them out. If the next team does the same, you can bet your sweet bippy it's going to be done and uh, see what you can get for Chris Paddock. Just see. I don't say give him away. Good morning to Mal, pal, who's out there in San Diego and probably disagrees with me. Pitches get glitches. Joel is here. That guy is here. And thanks, everybody, for coming in. All right? And Beach Bum is in the chat room just trying to piss everybody off. And when he hasn't pissed anybody off, what happens? Beach Bum gets pissed off, right? So it's perfect. It's a great game we play. It's a great chat room. For those of you listening on Spreaker, iTunes, or wherever you can find it, I urge you, uh, I urge you to uh, come into the chat room when you get a chance. These are wonderful people. Absolutely. Forget the podcast. You can say what you want. But the people 
you will not find any better baseball fans in this country than the people in the chat room, okay? So Paddock is now a third of an inning past halfway to his total of 90 innings last season in the minor leagues. He had thrown 637 pitches through eight starts last year. He's already at 699. I am telling you, uh, uh, market Paddock. I know he's going to be a great pitcher so far. You market him. Don't give him away, but I think at this point you may find somebody who will give you exactly what you need. Now, of course, when you market Paddock, before you do, let me know and tell me who's going to replace Paddock in the rotation on your team. One of the names that we didn't mention was Harold Ramirez, who was also called up, and I picked him up in uh, in, in uh, Tout Wars. And, uh, the, you know, the Marlins only have one home run in the month of May. I'm going to say that again. One home run, and that should have been a trivia question. How many home runs have the Marlins hit in May? Uh, but Harold R- Ramirez is a player that, uh, uh, you know, look, he's finally getting his chance. Uh, he went one for four in his debut sa- Saturday. He's uh, starting in left field uh, on, on starting left field on Tuesday. I'll tell you, uh, last year he spent the entire year at Double A in the Toronto Blue Jays organization. He hit three twenty, but he never got a crack at Triple A, and then he became a free agent. So who knows? In the winter, he headed to the Venezuelan League. He batted three eighty one with a four fifty nine on base percentage. And already this season, Ramirez hit three fifty five in 120 plate appearances in AAA. Let's see. All right, yesterday everybody's jumping up and down. Milwaukee uh, brought up Keston Hiura, and they needed his right-handed bat. And here's the reason. Ryan Braun has missed three straight starts with a left hand. He hit a home run yesterday. Aguilar, no home runs in 38 plate appearances in May after he hit three in two games at the end of April. Kane was batting 246 before a five-hit game uh, the other night. So, you know, they needed him. So they brought him up, and Travis Shaw mysteriously goes on the uh, an injured list. Don't forget, with Hura, he's gotten a lot of He's a good hitter. Don't get me wrong. He's got a great, as they say, hit tool. He's a good hitter. But he doesn't. he's not going to be an impact player in any category. Just not. And not going to hit you a ton of home runs, not going to steal a ton of bases. So be careful. You know, this kid is good. But um, for fantasy baseball, he may be a better major league player than he is a fantasy player. And talking about a better major league player, there's nobody better in my major league of life, one of my dear best friends. And how did I meet him? Through fantasy baseball. And that's Cha-Cha. There he is, listening in from the great state of Arizona. Uh, and there you go. Absolutely. This is what you play fantasy baseball for. To have friends like the Fan Addict, to have friends like Cha-Cha, and all of you guys who come to the chat room every morning. Uh, people are going, uh, it's all about gambling? Yeah. It's all, I have made so many friends that I consider to be extended family. You can't put a price on that. Thank you all. Milwaukee Brewers, okay. Uh, the Bulldog. Who's the Bulldog right-hander? <laughs> That's right, it's Woodruff. He allowed only an infield single by Gene Segura in the first inning. Uh, he did walk five. He finished with three consecutive scoreless innings. He retired last 11 in a row. And listen to over his last four starts, Woodruff is 4-0 and with a 1-2-3 ERA, allowing only three runs over 22 innings. Here's the question for you in the chat room. And going back to his last six outings, he's 5-0 and with a 2-7. Going forward, who would you rather have, Woodruff or Paddock? Woodruff or Paddock? Going forward, I would really like to know. And by the way, we did a poll on Sunday. Who would you rather have for the rest of I was going to have a better uh, fantasy year, Senzel or Vlad Guerrero Jr.? Senzel wins the vote, believe it or not. Yes, he did. Shows you how quickly people could change. Okay, Beeks. Oh, here we go, Mr. Beeks. I I knew Andrew was talking about Beeks the other night. I should have figured he was. Paddock, hands down. Okay, who would you rather have, Woodruff or Paddock going forward? Okay, I'm going to say Woodruff. How's that? Let's see what you say. That's more important, okay? 
So how'd you like to catch on went to the game yesterday, the Arizona game. So tell us how you liked it. So uh, Keston Hero went two for three in a walk. He singled in his first at bat in the second inning. He lined the shot off on Jared Eikhoff's rear end, right? So, uh, yeah, but, yeah, that poll probably changed, Lou. Uh, you know, if I put it up today, it would be, it would be, uh, Vlad, all right? So, with, uh, Travis Shaw goes on the injured list, uh, Moustakis knew we'd be moving back to third base. That's okay. And away we go. Jared Eikhoff entered the game with a 1-5 ERA, having allowed one run in 20 innings over his last three starts. Uh, but the Brewers didn't find him hard to puzzle. They pounded him for eight hits, five runs, and four innings. Okay, who uh, the guest room? And look, uh, a few more days of what Andy and I are going. I could use. I may need that guest room. Okay, so there you go. Uh, as far as the Phillies go, oh my goodness gracious, Bryce Harper. Look, he's reaching base at a very high rate. He's hitting for power. But he's got no batting average and he's got no strikeouts. And uh, but he's playing pretty good defense. But you can't. He's not. You know that's not what he's there for. He leads the National League in walks, but he also leads the majors in strikeouts. He's on pace to be the first Philly to strike out 200 times in a season. Struck out twice Tuesday night. Gives him multiple strikeouts in 20 of the team's first 41 games. He has struck out 18 times in the last 10 games. He's got a strikeout rate of about 31%. Holy mackerel. He also walked his first two plate appearances Tuesday night. He's walked nine times in 10 games. He's got an 18% uh, walk rate, which is on par with uh, last year. His on-base percentage, 370, is below his career average but the fourth and the fourth highest on the team. But uh, he also has the most doubles, second most homers. It's a mixed bag, and yet most people think that the Harper is among the worst players in baseball. All right? Uh, <laughs> please mention West Coast teams more. Okay. Uh, I think I try to mention all of them, but if that's what the lady says, that's what we do. All right? So, uh, yeah, so Bryce having a hard time. And also now, as far as the relief pitchers go, uh, they expect Robertson and Tommy Hunter to return before the All-Star break. Robertson will throw for about three more weeks. Who cares about Hunter? They're also preparing Roman Quinn to bat strictly right-handed when he returns from the injured list. He was a switch hitter. Jake Arrieta is going to start today against the Brewers uh, left-hander Gio Gonzalez. And uh, there you go. So, um, yep, it's all about Bryce Harper. That's for sure. Um yeah, and Braun's home run, home run came on a curve. 25th career home run against the Phillies in 74. And he loves 74 games. It was his 14th home run in 36 games at Citizen Bank Park. He loves it. For the New York Mets, Wilson Ramos, grand slam in the first inning. I'll tell you what, uh, really needed that. Tomas Nito has been uh, getting a lot of playing time. And this is not what the Mets bargained for. Syndergaard threw one slider the entire game. In recent starts, he struggled to get a constant grip on the slider. And that's why he was going to his glove. So what did he do? It's not that he stopped using the, uh, it's not that he stopped using whatever he was using, if he was using anything, uh, which may appear that he was using something, if you know what I'm saying, okay? Uh, he decided he did it because he couldn't get the grip for the slider. So what does he do? He doesn't throw the slider, and it worked. Now, for those of you who have been here for many, many moons, uh, I'm not getting enough credit for Josh Bell. <laughs> I touted him so hard, and everybody's uh, getting on me because I'm not doing well in Tout Wars. I'm doing okay in labor, and I'm doing okay in the Sirius XM Host League. I got a chance to win that one. Uh, but, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, once again, the injury brug has just about hammered me. I lost Tyon. I lost Lamb. I lost uh, I lost four offensive players. Kingery, you know, but in, in, if you're in an only league, you lose four. Off, you can, just can't do it. Anyway, Josh Bell homered twice. Joe Musgrove allowed one hit through seven strong innings. He hasn't been that good. 
And uh, Phoenix native, I'll tell you what, they loved it, right, Chacha? When Cole Tucker hit a two-run homer in the top of the eighth, if you stay there. Uh, the Pirates snapped the nine-game. 